Hello and what is up everyone? It is Hachi from the Art of Dota and I'm back with another patch notes analysis video. It's been a couple weeks and we're already in another patch here. So let's see what we have for us in this new patch 7.07c. Um, just by looking at my sidebar here, it doesn't look like it's the longest patch notes. So, um, but they're making some changes, it seems, to the game itself and not just the heroes. So starting off, the bounty rune now has its base experience reduced. Uh, of course, this only counts with the second bounty runes as the first bounty runes still don't give experience. Um, but the experience growth is actually increased from 5 per minute to 7 per minute. So they give a little bit less base experience, but the growth is just slightly higher there. TP scroll, the initial cooldown is increased to 10 seconds after creep spawn. This is actually big because what people actually do now is they all just TP to a lane once they pick up the bounty rune. Sometimes carries will do it, like uh, carries will go to the off lane and actually pick up the bounty rune on the enemy side uh, at the start of the game and then TP to the safe lane. Uh, now. I still think that's not going to change that because 10 seconds the creeps are not even going to meet yet. So that's not going to change. But uh, maybe being able to block or avoid a first blood gank, let's say the same carry walks to the bounty rune, but the enemy team is there to try to contest. Uh, you're going to be able to you know, secure the kill if you don't have a stun. Whereas before, uh, let's say you had only slows, there was no way to cancel TP. Uh, you just be able to TP out during that first fight, which is kind of funny. But uh, now you're not gonna be able to do that anymore with your free TP. 10 seconds after the creep spawn is usually enough for one side to get a kill, uh, even without stunts. So that's nice. Uh, that was super annoying, especially if you had like a very strong kill lineup. Whereas before, like obviously the carry is not gonna have a TP, the mid's not gonna have a TP, and they're gonna die to it most of the time. But. Um, they would just live because they have that ten or that TP ten seconds sooner. But now that the cooldowns a little bit increased, that's where I would say this change matters the most. Me blocking mid and things like that as well. Um, but I like that. I felt like the TP came off cooldown a little bit too quickly. So what did they do? The Bloodstone. Bloodstone mana regeneration per charge is reduced. Uh, Storm Spirit was feeling a little bit strong, so they're going to nerf Bloodstone just slightly there by 0.05 mana regen. Uh, and again, this is, has to do with the charges, so uh, if you're not getting a lot of charges, it's not going to affect you that much. But it does add up, right? Because 0.05 is not that much, but per charge, and you're considering like you're potentially having like, you know, 30 charges or whatever if you're in a snowball -y game it's not nearly going to give you as much mana regen as before meteor hammer impact stun duration increased from 1.75 to 2 so slight buff there to meteor hammer a little bit of a longer stun i mean this is by 0.25 seconds not uh anything too major all right now a on this this seems like a big change here i already see the cost reduction there uh, 75 less gold, but what did they do to the item itself? The damage that triggers from the item will no longer drop your health below 80%. So if you're 82% and take damage, that would have made it 70%. Your health drops to 80% instead. Alright, that's it. So before, you actually take the damage and then you uh, get the invulnerability. So if it was like super high damage, and this actually recently happened to me, um, and stay tuned for the Aeon Disc video because that's coming out. But before what would happen is like you just get initiated on, and say you took a big burst of damage initially, and it brought you way below 80%. So this what it happened to me in IO where I would got uh, blink dueled by a Legion, and she just like hit me like a truck, right? And I went down to like at least 50% HP off of that one hit before my Aeon Disc, or then my Aeon Disc proc but I was at 50% HP. So now she does the same thing and I'm gonna be at 80% even though I took damage that would have brought me to less than half HP or half HP. And I really like this change. This item seemed a little bit weak and this would not be the reason 
that I thought uh, that the item wasn't as strong as it should be or wasn't as usable, viable as it should be. But it definitely makes sense now that I recently bought the item and it happened to me. Because um, it doesn't really happen that much when you're buying this item on cores, but on supports, it'll happen a lot. And it just makes the item not feel good at all on a support hero. Um, even on like Io, where I feel like Io benefits from this item so much because he's usually uh, the first target the enemy wants to go for and just be able to sustain and keep yourself at 80% for two seconds for your teammates to come and help you is going to be a big deal for here like that. And I think this is definitely a big buff to the item and we're going to see it probably built more on support heroes uh, later on in the game. Because again, it's never going to be an item that supports can rush, and they're initially going to reduce the cost as well, which I think is big. It has they didn't reduce it, uh, reduce it enough. Uh, I would say that supports are going to pick it up like really early on or anything like that, but definitely as a later game item. Because again, mana boots is pretty common in supports, and you just of that. You got a vitality booster, you get the recipe, then you got the Aeon disc. Uh, again, it's still going to be a very late game item and mostly purchased on four position supports over fives. I don't think fives are ever going to be able to afford it still. But uh, on to the next change, Troll Priest, the new troll, now has the mana reg regeneration or reduced. Apparently that was a bit too OP to have a 3 mana regen. I don't know, I mean who actually uses that creep other than, I guess Doom. Doom would be the main uh, person that would, uh, or main hero, that would actually devour that creep. Uh, I mean, Chen doesn't really need that extra mana region too much. Neither does Enchantress. Or, like, I don't know why you would Helm the Dom, that creep of all creeps. Uh, so, uh, it's a bit of a weird change. I guess slight nerf to Doom. Uh, Hero respawn time adjustments from level 12 to 20. So, what is this? I can't. 1, 2, 3... What does this mean? Zero, zero, zero. Current, new, different. Right, this is badly formatted, guys. But right, so the first column is level, or first, yeah, first column is levels. Second column is the current value, and then second, third column is the new value, and then the difference. As you can see here, it's just not aligned at all for some reason. So it's only starts at level twelve and they increased it slightly and it still increased it looks like by around four and it's actually just four four seconds four seconds and then it starts to ramp back down again so then it goes back to two seconds here and then after 21 is still the same so they increase the spawn time just slightly and during this time is actually the most critical time in the game um, I would say like when you're level 12 to 20, that's usually where games are actually won for the most part. Um, at least in the competitive scene, in pubs is a little bit different. But in the competitive scene, uh, this is critical timing for most teams to try to end the game. Either go for a really good team fight into Roshan, then push high ground. And having just a little bit extra respawn timer is going to make it so games might actually uh, be shorter as teams have a better chance of just ending on their first push because let's say a team uh, dies on one of their heroes uh, that hero is going to be dead for four more seconds which is the difference between potentially getting a Rax or um, that team having that hero respawn and successfully defend so I would say this is actually a pretty big change it's going to make the game a little more fast paced more uh, faster paced than it already is in this new patch without the beast shrines and all that anymore so that's a uh, that's pretty cool change uh, okay, now we're down to the heroes. See what they did to the heroes. All right, please, please no IO nerf. He's not being played enough. Buff him. Buff him. No one's playing IO. He gives people eggs. People don't care. You know, you get eggs. Who cares? All right, let's <laughs> we'll do the alchemist here. Alchemist level ten talent change from five armor to negative five unstable concoction cooldown, or plus five armor. And to say negative five armor, that would that'd be a shitty talent. I would, Crap, I'll, I want to skill the negative 5 armor. At least that's what I thought I said. Again, I just woke up a little bit ago, guys, so. Uh, and I, you, gotta, you gotta do the patch notes videos when you wake up, and that's the first thing you check on your phone. Uh, but anyway, Alchemist, level 15 talent increased. 
uh, increased from 250 health to 350 health. So again, Alchemist is a pretty crappy hero. Um, I believe his win rate is garbage, so they're just buffing his talents a little bit here. Uh, it doesn't look like they're making any other changes to him, though. I don't know why they would take away his 5 armor, though. That feels a bit iffy. Um, maybe they're, they're like, they want him to be battle hawk, it seems, um, from these changes. going to give him like 100 more health instead of armor, which that also allows him to fight. So I don't know why they take that away, but they give him cooldown reduction on the stun, which is weird. Um... It's allowed to stun twice in a fight faster. Doesn't make that much sense. What is his other level 10 talent? Let me check that out. Alright, it's uh right, move this to the side. Um uh, to No, did I Oh, two. Sorry about this, guys. Should have this on deck already, but there you go. Right, my internet is slow. What is going on? Please help. Send help. What the? F okay, okay, we're good now, guys. No problem here. Where's the talents? Okay, so level 10, it's either that or attack speed. So that's actually a bit of a nerf because why does Alk need 25 attack speed? You gotta say, I don't know. So it's not a nerf, it depends how we value 5 armor or negative 5 second cooldown reduction. But I mean, I'm pretty sure that hero needs armor. Uh, he's a pretty low armor hero. So that, that makes no sense to me, honestly. I don't know what Ice Frog is on here, but uh, okay, his level 20 talent is increased. Uh, again, the, the damage of Unstable. They're trying to just buff Unstable Concoction. Like, what? All right, let's check, check out his other talents here. Wait, so before at level 25, he had cooldown reduction of negative 8 seconds, and that was just garbage. Pretty garbage. So now instead, they put it at level 10. So again, it is for battle out. Like you can go for like this concoction damage, and you go like a medallion or something. It's just go oh, ham on people, I guess. I mean, who needs armor when you're stunning them? You know, but um, that's a lot of extra damage at level twenty. It's one hundred sixty more damage, and of course, if you're going to battle out, you're gonna go this over the cleave. Uh, his level twenty five talent has been changed again. They changed that talent. And they're gonna make it more regen for his chemical rage. Okay, yeah, that does help battle out if you're just stunning people. Uh, you're not gonna need that extra basic attack time. Usually, you're playing more of like a supportive position. Uh, that's weird. I, I don't think it will make Alchemist legit or viable or anything like that. But changes them around. Maybe we'll see some battle outs. Um I don't see why not. Not. Let's see some team try it out for sure. Alright, what did they do to Anti Mage again? They nerfed him even more. Alright, his mana break damage has been reduced from 60% to 50%. That just straight up less damage. Uh, blink cooldown has been increased. They get wrecked. Just by one second, but uh, at max level, it's actually three seconds at level one and level two. And then two at level three. His level fifteen talent is stronger now, though, to account for this change. So overall, if he does go for the negative cooldown talent, he still gets the same blink cooldown, a four second blink. So if he gets a talent, that doesn't change anything. But if he doesn't, it's just nerfed by one second. Okay. Okay. Level 20 talent, illusion, incoming damage, increase, and nerfing that illusion even more. Again, it's very annoying if you don't have heroes that can deal with illusions. Uh, Bane has also been changed. He seemed like he was too strong of a support, and what did it do to him here? His cast range has just been reduced of his nightmare. 
um, only at level 1, level 2, and level 3. Level 4 is the same. But usually, that's where you're going to look to go in for ganks is level 1, level 2, and level 3 nightmare. Um, when you're level 4, usually that point of the game, um, I mean, you're usually maxing out another spell first, right? So you're not maxing nightmare. So at that point of the game, Nightmare is not really used as that setup that was in the early game anymore. So that cast range is only going to matter in terms of being able to save your teammates rather to use it aggressively. So nerf to Bane's early game in general, which was pretty strong. Uh, Beastmaster is also a very powerful hero. He's going to receive some damage nerfs to his wild axes going down just slightly every single level by 10 it seems. Um, his hawk movement speed has also been reduced. So... Just small tweaks to Beastmaster, nothing major, I would say. Brewmaster, his Earth Brewling armor is reduced from 5 to 3. I'm going to make it so that Panda is a little bit easier to burst, uh, especially with high physical damage. Again, it felt a little bit too tanky uh, with all like the changes that he's had, like the extra HP and things like that. Um, it doesn't feel as killable as it was before. Um, especially later on in the game um, and with this armor reduction it's gonna matter a lot because that I don't know how much that HP talent talent actually gives them but it's these amounts like in the thousands right it's like a thousand fifty or something like that a thousand five hundred I mean so uh, armor reduction by just two is definitely significant um, all right but other than that I would say he's pretty much the same strength again um, he was very powerful, but I think Ice Frog realizes that people are just not really playing against him properly. So just going to give him a little bit of a nerf there, but he's going to leave him more or less the same. Because already he's kind of falling off a little bit as people are figuring out, alright, you just deal with him in lane. And his strongest point in the game is his laning stage. After that, everything's fine. Okay, so Broodmother has been changed now with her talents again being changed down a little bit. A little bit of extra damage on spawn spiraling damage at level 10. Over 20, her uh, attack speed is actually reduced, so nerf there. And again, you don't go for the spawn spiraling damage, so that doesn't really change much. Uh, level 25, her talent reduced again, so overall nerf to Broodmother is slightly in her numbers. Uh, she's been picking up here or there by teams like Virtus Pro and Liquid, and she still felt pretty powerful again mentioned in my 7.07 .07, just straight up passion notes analysis that I felt like Brood was really strong and I think it is the case people haven't really wanted to test her out uh, again the teams that already played Brood continued to pick her with um, varying degrees of success I would say she's doing overall pretty well so I think Ice Frog realizes that it's gonna nerf her numbers a little bit because um, again in certain Scenarios she can just feel really ridiculous um, and even more powerful than she was before just because of the change that she always is moving at max move speed now. She's in web, she's max move speed. Before, you attack her and she's slowed down and she can't phase walk anymore. Now, it's like the old old original brood when she first got the phase walking and she can just walk all other place. Like she can go over to cliff and um, if the brood player knows what they're doing, like they, they have the webs ready, they're going to be able to escape most scenarios if you can't lock her down. So, uh, for Centaur here, his Agi gain has been reduced. Um, I think this hero has a really high win rate in like pubs, I believe, in 7.07, .07, so it's going to nerf him there. Um, so it feels like what's happening with Centaur is like you can give a complete noob centaur and he's gonna mess up the laning stage he's gonna die a bunch of times and then the game drags on you know uh, the enemy takes bad fights as happens in lows MMR, lower mmrs and lower skill games and then centaur just gets unkillable he just feels super powerful he walk he's walking down lanes and suddenly he's not able to be ganked anymore he can just pop his ultimate and run away so just a little bit of a agi gain reduction will nerf his armor and that's gonna help him be a little bit easier to kill without changing the core of the hero and like everything about his strength and strength strength you know you gotta be fat so uh, not a bad change and it wasn't that big of a reduction but it definitely will add up I, I don't know I'm gonna do the math to see how much armor that's gonna result in him losing over the course of the whole game but I would say it's a decent amount 
Chaos Knight, his Phantasm cooldown is increased from 130 to 145. Again, the hero didn't feel that powerful, but he definitely you definitely run into scenarios where he just feels like he's ridiculous. If you don't have any counters like Medusa or anything like that. So that's going to knock him down a little bit. Again, it's only a 15 second difference. So Chen, this is a hero I thought would be really good and picked up a lot, but he seems to be more or less ignored for Enchantress instead, as he feels like you can play faster with Enchantress, you know, or with the creeps, and Chen I definitely did play him a little bit in this patch, and he felt kind of weird having that heal now, and you feel like the heal was that significant, so let's see what they actually do. Um, and Holy Persuasion, the mana cost is reduced, and I like that, I level 1 especially. That means, because the problem with going to heal, right, uh, when you're healing people, if you want to heal them casually in lane, you're just going to run out of mana. Because Chen is a hero that you're not going to like buy that many clarities on. You're going to have one at most. And uh, you pretty much have to rush mana moves if you want to be able to sustain this uh, early like Holy Persuasion. And uh, of course, you can also use Holy Persuasion to send teammates back, which can be very valuable in lane. But with the ramping up mana cost, you don't really want to do that. Especially at just 100 mana straight up at level 1. But uh, now it's going to be a lot easier on Chen. Like he can just casually send a teammate back with Holy Persuasion at level 1 and not sweat it at all with just 70 mana. Um, definitely a lot less than it was before. And I like this change. Uh, it might mean you can even skip your clarity in certain scenarios and, you know, go for something else. Uh, his level 10 talent has been increased uh, from 20% experience gain to 35%. I think that's great. Chen's talents are really good. So you're going to have a good time if you go for this experience gain talent. You maybe get a Midas as well to uh, even increase that experience gain. And you're going to have a good time. But the other level 10 talent has also been increased from 125 range to 200. Oh, that's such a hard choice. All right, I feel like you're going to go for the cast range talent in a game where you're kind of snowballing and you're not going for that Midas. You're trying to end the game, you know, you're buying some items like, I don't know, Meteor Hammer or something like that. You're trying to end the game real quick. But if the game, you realize, will be dragged out, you go for the experience gain and you go for the Midas and you scale into the late game because his other talents are not bad at all. Um, they scale pretty well. He has like a GPM talent, his level 25 talent is pretty good. Um, definitely scales with items and levels for sure. Because the faster you like max out all your spells, um, he'll have more impact in the fight. Because again, Chen feels very underwhelming if he's behind in levels, behind in farm. Clockwork. Uh, that hero, I would say, is making a resurgence. So let's see what they did to him here. Just all right, a slight nerf. Yeah, power cogs are just evened out. They're required two hits to kill at all levels. Um, not that big of a deal at all. Again, I feel like Ice Frog, these heroes that are just, you know, coming back in and they're feeling pretty powerful in certain scenarios, they're just getting tweaked a little bit, just slightly. So for Drow, uh, I think that she fits the same category as well. So I'm expecting a nerf here. And there you go. Precision Aura nerfed. Again, it's not really Drow that seemed super powerful, it was Drow Dusa, and I wonder what they're going to do to Dusa, because he actually received a buff in the last uh, patch notes, 7.07b, and I feel like she's going to get nerfed here, but uh, we're going to see as we get down there. But her level 15 talent has been increased from 300 gust knockback distance to 400. Okay, slight buff to that talent there, but I feel like that's not a talent you usually go for anyway. So again, they're buffing up these talents that are definitely underutilized. Earth Spirit, um, same thing with Clockwork, one of the resurging fours coming back in the meta. But uh, I, mean, I felt like he was always there, but his Geomatic Grip Silence Duration is reduced. Um... And this is a change I've seen coming for a long time. You read the numbers. That level one, level one. Look at that. That's two point five second silence just at level one, which is great. Because a level like four Earth Spear, level three Earth Spear. If you decide to go for that silence, um, he has a lot of sable. That's a two second silence, a little bit of a stun and a slow. Um, just with a level three Earth Spear, if he decides to even everything out. Uh, usually Earth Spirits, I believe. I'm not an Earth Spirit player, but I, I believe they go for two in the stun first. And then they get the point in the science at level 
4, and at that point they're a disabling beast with just a level 4 Earth Spirit. Uh, very good at going for ganks early on. And that's going to nerf him there because uh, 0.5 second difference it will matter a lot in terms of like kills on a superhero like Puck. Ember Spirit, t level 10 talent increased from 150 Flame Guard Absorption to 200. And this, again, talent is usually skipped over for the damage talent, and both actually has been buffed. And again, Ember Spirit just doesn't feel that powerful. Um, in various certain scenarios, he can be strong, but even then, um, it just feels like he peaks at the wrong time, and unless he snowballs real hard, um, he's not really that viable to be picked up in the mid lane. And he's going to receive some early talent buffs there at level 10 to both of his talents and at level 15 he's going to get a buff there to his flame guard dps not bad again small buffs to ember um he felt kind of weak uh, as a mid lane hero definitely not picked too often and it's going to help him feel a little bit stronger earlier on huskar base movement speed reduced by five not something that will matter too much early on because usually he's a static hero anyway might make a difference uh, whether he can like chase for a kill or not and he's actually pretty vulnerable in lane so this is going to hurt him uh, if he's in like a situation where he's playing against a very aggressive lane again the hero wasn't overpowered or anything like that but in certain scenarios he definitely can get out of control um, but that's the nature of Huskar. I feel like there's either a Huskar patch or a non-Huskar patch. He's either very situationally OP or just not very good at all. But uh, here we go. Lone Druid is going to get his Spirit Bear health increased by 100 level 1, and then 200, then 200 again level 3, up to 300 at level 4. This hero definitely didn't feel strong at all. Liquid made him work, but uh, it was really good on the hero. Um, play around him well, make a lot of space for Metal Man to get his Radiance at a really good timing, and then they usually transition that into taking a good team fight and just winning the game. But um, with other teams, like and even in pubs, Lone Druid feels quite weak, so that change makes sense there. Really messed up Meepo here, and there's no Medusa changes. What the heck? Alright, Luna, her strength gain has been reduced. Surprising. Uh, Definitely didn't expect to see a Luna nerf. Her cast point has been reduced. Oh, that's a little bit of buff there, I would say. Especially for like a casting Luna build. I went that in one of my pubs. Because uh, <laughs> it was offlane Luna. And I'm like, ah, I don't feel like right clicking. Let me let me go for all these Lucent Beam talents. And buy an Ags. And it actually worked out pretty well. But her level 10 talent has been increased cast range. Alright, 150 cast range to 200. That's a caster Luna off. The offlane Luna with Lucent Beam. Just, I went, I, what did I buy? I went Midas first, then I went for Ags, and then I believe I went Kaya Veil. Vale. Yes, yeah, alright. Caster Luna here. What, what did they do? Alright, they're buffing Caster Luna. I'm sure it's a thing, right? You might even be able to go this uh, as a core. I don't know. Uh, with like an IO, alright, level 15 IO, uh, Luna level 15 as well, you're just spamming the Lucent Beans with infinite mana from the IO, and you're just getting that free Ags raining death upon people with your uh, orbital cannon, I, I don't know, uh, it feels, it, this seems good in my opinion, <laughs> alright, uh, what, what are they, how do they dumpster Meeple here, oh my god, this hero's trash can now. Alright, all right. base magic resistance, you're get, gonna get rid of that. So your Jakiros, all these like Zeus's, you're just gonna you're gonna melt through the Meepo illusions. No problem anymore. The Lestrax, the Jakiros again, you know, the Storm Spirits. Uh, I wonder if they did change him. There's a pop that Meepo. Uh, the problem with Meepo um, in the previous patch was with his talents. He would just get to this point where he's unkillable if you play him properly, because if you're avoiding deaths on Meepo and you're playing pretty reserved, you're gonna get to level 25 before anyone else on the, the enemy team gets anywhere close. Like they're gonna be like level 15 or something, and you're level 25, and then you get Aegis, you get that 700 health talent at level 25, and the game is over. And there's nothing really you can do, right? The Meepo just initiates on someone, they're dead. They have to buy back, or you know you're losing racks. 
and that's this that's all you can do so what they're going to do to him now is his level 10 talent is going to be strength so he's going to have more strength earlier on previously his level 15 talent was a strength talent i believe yeah so he's getting that strength earlier on at level 10 and then he's getting a damage talent as well at level 10 before that talent came at level 20. his people scaled very well with levels level 15 talent he got that strength he can go maybe make a kill and then you know get that a little bit of extra experience get level 20 get that damage all all, all those meepos get the damage by the way and then level 25 700 health agus and the game but now level 10 gets the strength then he has to choose between the strength or the damage and now his damage talent has been changed to negative four second earth mine cooldown that's garbage like why would you ever need that um, what's his other level 20 talent? Let me check here. So you're definitely going to go for the other one now. Even There's no way the other one is worse than this. There's no way. So, let's see. It's evasion. Yeah, you definitely go with evasion over earthbind cooldown. There's, that just doesn't make any sense at all. The uh, level 25 talent, the puff, the poof, puff, poof, poof cooldown has been further reduced with that talent just by one second. Um, but again, I think the health, even though it is nerfed here by 100, is going to be better uh, overall. Um, and his level 15 talent is now lifesteal. So he gets the lifesteal later on, and he gets the strength earlier on. Um, I think what Ice Frog wants to do with Meeple is just make him more active earlier on, I feel. Because um, his playstyle is definitely f geared towards later on in the game, and he was, he was more farm heavy. Because you didn't really want to fight until you have all these powerful talents um, that he got added to him. But now, I think he's back to, you know, maybe going for that level 10, you go for some early on fights with this team. But I would say that overall, this is a big nerf to Meepo. Big, big, big nerf. And I don't know if he deserved it. And again, uh, you got to keep in mind that the talents apply to all of his clones as well. So uh, attack damage, that's 20 damage to all his clones. So that's actually a lot. So if you want to earlier, like, because before you got 40 damage at level 20, that's a lot later on. I mean, sure, it's half the damage, but it's coming very early on. Meepo hits level 10 pretty quickly. So, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Alright, Morphling. This hero is in a weird spot. Arkeez is actually playing him a little bit and making him work, I would say. So, we're going to see what happens here. Morphling back to your hero sets you back to the same percentage health and mana all right all right so this is based on his ultimate right so when he goes back to his hero um is that what the ability is called so what they well anyway like when he uses his you know or when he either automatically turns back to his regular hero or he manually does it with a sub ability um he gets set to the same percentage health and mana you had before he morphed and this is a big buff because before you'd like turn into someone and then it's, it just felt trash because you're like i want to be morphed i don't want to be this other hero like you're going to cast a couple of spells and usually go back to yourself like it's really good against heroes like am where you just casually get their blink you know blink forward and then go back to morph and then kill him but uh, so now you can actually use it to tank a little bit and then you're gonna go back to the health that you had before you morphed. So you're just gonna be able to soak up a little bit more damage. And so here it says, if you're low health after taking damage in morph, morphing back heals you. So there you go, just a little extra heal. And again, with the way his morph works right now, or whatever it's called, attribute shift, not morph, um, it actually heals you theoretically. Like if you're really low and you start morphing strength, it just increases your HP. Like I don't know how it actually works out. That ability is too comp too complicated for me to understand. 
but uh, from what I was watching on Ortiz's stream, it seems like you know you're he was like super low HP, so he morphed all Agi, and you can go full Agi. Like you go full Agi as before, uh, you're afraid to go full Agi because if you like took too much damage, morphing strength, you wouldn't uh, gain that HP back. But now you go full Agi and you start morphing strength again, uh, you just gain a crap ton of HP all of a sudden. Uh, I don't know why that happened. Um, I mean, I read the ability, but it happens, and it's uh, property of the new attribute shift. So, again, he's already able to like tank a lot of damage in that sense. So, with his morph getting buffed there as well, um, that's great. And now it's also going to change his primary attribute to the targets. So, what does that mean? Because before you would still be an Agi hero, um, no matter what you would turn into so how does that actually why does that matter let's say i'm trying to think of a scenario it's like when would being an agi like let's say you know like agi queen of pain like you still have the same mana pool you're gonna cast spells that's not gonna make that much of a difference um i guess if you like turn into a strength hero you're gonna it's basically the, the status resistance like that kind of thing, right? Because, like, any, of course, all Agi heroes are going to be the same. That, that won't make a difference. Literally, it will make no difference because he's going to say that it's, nothing's going to happen. But, like, for int heroes, let's say, and strength heroes, where that will matter is, like, let's say he turns into a centaur, he'll get, like, that status resist or whatever. And the morph duration has also been reduced. Okay, so it'll last, uh, last for a shorter amount of time. But again, I already mentioned you're not going to stay in more form for that long anyway, so it's not that big of a change. I think that the fact that you can just tank some extra damage, you know, you can most actually be useful. You go in, you just cast your spells, whatever hero you become, and then stay alive for a while, just you know, create some space for your team, then come back as morph at the HP you were before. Um, level 20 talent has been changed. From negative 25 second morph cooldown to plus 15 second morph duration. So they're going to get rid of the cooldown reduction and they're going to make it higher duration if it doesn't feel useful. But again, I'm back to this change. Again, when would changing into an interior all of a sudden be valuable? I guess it makes it so if you do go for E Blade. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Trying to think here, because there's definitely something I'm missing here. I mean, I'll read it on Reddit later on. Nothing's popping out at me right now, but I'm sure someone on Reddit has figured this out. Um, oh, this is where this matters, but uh, for me, I can't really see it other than turning into like a strength hero. Because again, it only will matter with strength and int heroes. So Agi heroes, of course, there's going to be no difference. And I don't know how he would benefit from being an int hero. Because, again, his stats are not going to change, right? Ah, I got to read more for you. Okay, I have no idea. This, this hero confused, it confused me in the last patch analysis. 7.07b, it's confusing me now. So, I'm assuming his morph. Like, morph doesn't change his stats. He keeps his stats. Does he keep his stats? So what is this? Morph. Morphling changes form to match target enemy, gaining their basic abilities. That's it. So he still has his own items, things like that. That's all it says. I feel like there should be more here. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to move on because nothing's jumping out to me here with Morph. I don't know what that makes that much of a difference, but maybe they just want to be cool. You know, you want to become that hero, you got to take their attribute. But anyway, on to the next change here. Naga Siren, her Agi gain has been increased by a decent amount. All right. Illusion Cancer. Uh, level, 10 level 10 talent has been changed from 175 health to mirror image damage, 10% mirror image damage. 
okay. Um, maybe that's going to farm increase her uh, farm efficiency a little bit there with her mirror images. Could also scale pretty well later on in the game. 10%, I mean, not that much at level 10, but you know, when you're a late game Naga with six slots, it's a lot extra damage on your illusions. A lot better than 175 health. Uh, Night Stalker, his darkness vision limited against buildings and wards change from 675 to 800. All right, this is a nice change. That felt kind of ridiculous. Where he pops his ultimate, your wards can't see crap. Now they're gonna be able to see a little bit more. Um, very good change there. And this hero, I feel like, is quite weak. Well, not weak, but he's definitely feeling the effects of his previous nerfs. And now this is gonna add to that. Um, his hunter in the night flight vision has also been reduced. Okay, all right. Overall. Not that big nerf to Night Stalker, like, but additively, he's definitely gonna be played a lot less. So with Omni Knight here, his he might actually be played as a core though. That's the thing, because again, I feel like support Night Stalker is getting le less and less viable. Um, but uh, as a core in very certain scenarios, I feel like he'd actually be great with his talents. It scales really great on a core, uh, as a core hero. But anyway, uh, the next hero, Omni Knight, who is played as a core for the most part, his base int has been reduced, just slightly, by two. His degen aura AOE has also been reduced. Again, it's kind of ridiculous, especially when trying to chase him down in the off lane. Um, you just can never catch up on certain heroes. Uh, his level 20 talent has been reduced from six mana regen to four. So overall nurse, nothing too major, again, I feel like uh, pro teams definitely have been already figuring the hero out. He hasn't even really made his way into our pubs yet, but uh, they're gonna nerf his numbers just slightly here. Feels like a common theme in this patch notes, and we gotta speak. We're, we're only halfway through. What the heck? I'm 42 minutes in. Hey, all right, we gotta speed it up a little bit here, tiny bit. Sniper, his strength gain has been reduced. Um, Interesting. The hero didn't feel too strong. They're gonna nerf him. A level ten talent has been increased cooldown reduction from twelve percent to fifteen percent, and his level fifteen talent has been increased from twenty shrapnel DPS to twenty five. So I'm assuming you're gonna go for the other talents, which is probably damage or attack speed or something like that. And I can't pull it up, but I don't think it'll matter too much. As again, this just looks like they're making the lower less favored talents a little bit stronger and again I don't think cooldown reduction or shrapnel DPS is that bad on sniper because it's actually most of his damage output or contribution to a team fight at least in his in the mid game where he doesn't have you know a bunch of items yet because that shrapnel is definitely super annoying of course it falls off later on in the game but uh, definitely in that mid game phase shrapnel is still relevant in team fights Spectre, her desolate damage has been reduced slightly, and it's gonna now, however, spear spell immunity, pure spell immunity. So it will be KB, but it does slightly less damage when maxed out. Uh, about the same at level one, level two, it's five less. So just small tweaks there to Spectre. Uh, the big thing here is actually being able to pure spell immunity. Because before BKB was not really counted to her but um, she's not going to do that much damage to BKB targets or spell immune targets, right? Um, now she won't care. Like she's going to be able to do that desolate damage. And again, it does add up because again, you're going to keep in mind all her illusions and her ultimate and things like that. Therefore, none of that would have an effect on a BKB hero, and now it will. Sphere Breaker, level 15 talent has been increased from 30 to 40 damage. Normally, you wouldn't skill this talent. I believe the other talent is like Night Vision or something like that. I believe, or is that level 10? Hold on. Uh, I haven't played Spirit Breaker too much in the new patch. So let me check out. And again, where is our, where is our patch notes or our ranked update? We've got our patch notes. Where's our ranked update? No, it's health regen. With which I see people actually go over the damage most of the time still, 
but uh, 40 damage. Uh, you can argue for it. So Spirit Breaker, his empowering haste now has a separate value for hero and team. Okay, change empowering haste a little bit. So he gets more empowering haste on himself, but overall less on his teammates. Hmm. Uh, this thing when you pick Spirit Breaker is he actually synergizes with heroes that are kind of slow or heroes that just move fast already and you want to move faster, right? Because the Empowering Haste was a big part of that. It allow you to snowball pretty hard in like team fights because uh, you just keep chasing for the extra target. Like the reason why the hero is so strong is let's say you're having like a pretty bad game, but then later on you're, you're always going to be able to chase people down. It's so hard to get away from Spirit Breaker unless you have like Lincolns or something because it's like let's say you commit to like a high ground push it doesn't go well i mean defense and they're just chasing you down like charge comes in he speed buffs all of his teammates they're all running faster they're all chasing you down and it's very hard to disengage from a spirit breaker and this is gonna matter uh, i would say definitely in scenarios as well where let's say a teammates in trouble he wants to stay around they're not going to get that much of a speed buff anymore and uh, i like the change it's kind of like how cm works right she gets more mana region herself, less on her teammates, and now uh, kind of carried on a little bit here to Spirit Breaker and his speed buff. Uh, for Storm Spirit here, his agi gain is going to be reduced slightly, which will matter. Attack speed is something that Storm Spirit really needs, so having that less agi will affect him out. And talking about attack speed, his talent's also going to be nerfed there, so they're nerfing that offensive side of Storm Spirit. Still going to be a pretty powerful hero in the right hands level uh, TA, her level 10 talent has been changed from 250 health to plus 3 psionic traps. <laughs> They're trying to make her two techies or something. The trap damage has been increased again. Significantly, actually. It does as much damage at level 1 as it previously did at level 2. And her max charges, or her charge time has been reduced from 6 seconds to four seconds and by max charge times it means how long does the trap have to be on the ground before it does the max damage because again this damage is not like this is not equivalent of her just putting the trap down and blowing it up it has to be on the ground for a full six seconds previously but now four seconds so the damage got increased she has more traps and the charge time has been reduced so it's going to reach that max damage sooner all right TA techies. Hello? <laughs> I don't know. That's all I can say. Like, just imagine a bunch of traps in the Rosh pit. Just a support walks in and check. Boom. You're dead. Terror Blade. Intelligence gain has been reduced. Something that doesn't affect him too much because he doesn't need that much int. But again, it will matter because it's going to be the difference between like early on whether he can get his ultimate off of course it loses his, its mana cost but uh, having mana to sunder early on is pretty important as well as cast illusions his metamorphosis cooldown has been increased and his movement speed has been buffed a little bit okay just slightly and his level 20 talent has been increased from negative 8 second reflection cooldown to negative 10 seconds um, this is going to be real great against like aura based heroes you know like draw ranger and things like that you make an illusion of them you get the aura for yourself uh, level f yeah all right decent change to terribly they nerf his int there which again isn't that big of a deal and they buff him slightly uh, in other ways so just tweaking the hero a little, little bit there and i feel like that hero actually is quite strong in certain scenarios but uh, we're going to see here, Tiny Grow now grants you plus 5, 10, and 15 armor. Tiny has his armor back before he got it from the Craggy, and now he will get some armor again from his ultimate. Grow no longer increases his move speed, however. This is going to hurt out, again, especially if Tiny goes for treads over like phase boots. Um, the Grow bonus damage has been reduced. The base damage has been reduced from... 40 to 30 and 80 to 45 120 to 60 that's significant so he's gonna have overall less damage from his grow but he's gonna have a lot more armor 15 armor is no joke let's make him a lot tankier 
uh, the tree grab bonus building damage has been rescaled to 75 oh, that's a lot that's a lot all right i see why they made that change to the grow base damage reduction uh, uh, because 120 percent i mean that's no earth panda but that's definitely significant compared to the 75 percent at all levels now it's 120 at level four and again a lot of carry tiny players are maxing out the tree grab already to pressure towers early on with a 75% bonus damage, but now it's gonna be 120, and you can't ignore that tiny. It's gonna be bulldozing down your towers, and uh, tree grab, the unit damage has been rescaled from 30% at level one to 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, so this makes it slightly less effective at just like harassing in the laning stage, which is why it also was super strong. Uh, tree grab attack count has been rescaled to five okay so you're gonna get more attacks at all levels except for level four um the cooldown has also been rescaled though so it's gonna be increased slightly level one to balance out having five attacks again you're not doing that much additional unit damage at level one anymore so even though you're getting five attacks um it's not that op because before you would just hit twice but you'd hit in like big burst because you have that 30 percent extra unit damage now it's only 10 percent at level one which is something but until you uh, but again at level three you get 20 percent and you're getting five hits so um he's just making him slightly weaker at level one but level three um level five i would say level five tiny now is pretty powerful because not only does he have 100 percent because again i'm assuming going for the one one three build right at level five so if tiny goes for one one three which is a pretty common build on core or carry tinies he's gonna have 100 percent building damage 30 percent as he had before he's gonna get five hits on his tree which is one more than he did before and the cooldown is gonna be quite low at 14 seconds so all five tiny feels pretty powerful level 20 talent now for tiny has been negative 10 second cooldown reduction to negative seven um, again this is probably in coordination with his tree grab cooldown already being reduced slightly so it's just gonna even it out actually it does even out perfectly so again same thing with the anti-mage before um, if you scale this talent it's gonna be same story um, as it would feel a little bit too strong if it was negative two second or it was two seconds because uh, that's what it would be if they didn't make this change now it's five seconds which is still pretty good but two seconds on tree grab i don't know about that because it's a decent amount because later on tiny's hitting fast so he's actually able to utilize in two seconds like usually two seconds is when he's going to be finished hitting for the most part and he's gonna be able to grab another tree right away now he has to wait a couple more seconds which does matter um and tiny no longer is able to toss spell immune enemies it's gonna suck you can't cancel like jug tps or life stealer tps bkb tps anymore um that's all the changes to tiny we're getting to the bottom oh, okay so the patch notes weren't that long it was just a full page of updates so we're actually reaching an end here tusk his strength gain has been increased from 2.6 to 3 so quite a significant strength gain increase um, again he does have experience gain talent as well this is going to make tusk a lot better of a hero i definitely seen him play as an offlane in a lot of scenarios i forgot what that game was it was a southeast asian game and they had an offlane tusk and they're going insane i think it was fanatic yeah it was fanatic it was ohio's tusk he had like a um agonim so he was going in walrus kicking enemy heroes back into his team it was insane and i definitely like to see some more core tusk it's a fun hero to watch underlord his level 20 talent has been reduced from 30 health regen to 20 i don't know why they did this again the hero wasn't that strong at all uh, vengeful spirit her level 20 talent has been increased from negative four second magic missile cooldown reduction to negative five second um Normally, I think you would go for the other one anyway, and also her Vengeance Aura attack damage is rescaled. 
I would say it's nerfed, right? Yeah, it's nerfed. Again, this hero kind of goes in the same realm as that Draw Ranger, where she's not really that strong by herself, but paired with, I don't know, a Broodmother or a Medusa, she feels very powerful. Be able to do a ton of damage, give her team a lot of extra damage, and just melt towers. And I like that change there to Ventral. So they don't nerf Medusa, but they nerf the popular heroes that go with Medusa. They nerf that Drow, they nerf the Venge, they nerf the heroes that are going to buff her up. So Ice Frog doesn't feel like Medusa herself is a problem. It's these heroes that go with her that make her feel like an unstoppable force. So Wind Ranger here, her turn rate is going to be improved from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Which is nice. Uh, again, these are a lot of winter uh, wind wind runner buffs here. Not with the winter weapon yet. That's gonna be the last hero, but that's gonna allow her to you know, turn around a bit faster for you know shackle or power shot. Her wind run move speed has also been increased, so buffs are around. And as for her talents here, uh, her attack range talent level 15 from 75 attack range to 100. A buff there, buff to her other talent there as well. 90 power shot damage to 100. Her level 20, her cooldown reduction has actually been changed to one plus one shack plus one shackle target. Before she would get the cooldown reduction at uh, that was a level 25 talent, and the cooldown reduction was at level 20, right? Now they're switching it around, so she's getting that shackle target earlier on. And again, it was real nice because you could actually triple shackle someone if they're all in a line, which could straight up win you a team fight when like three heroes are just stuck together, right? And getting that level 20 is really good. And she's not going to lose out on the cooldown reduction because that's going to come at level 25 now. It's going to be even more cooldown reduction, 30%. And her other 25 talent goes from plus 20% mini stun uh, on the focus fire to 30%. That's going to be a lot. So you can choose between that. I feel like um, it's just going to be whether you need the cooldown reduction to, you know, keep casting all your spells or you're just super focus on carrying the game and you just want that mini stun on the focus fire to just destroy whatever target you're focusing down and you can argue for both level 25 talents honestly right um because sometimes you're just not going to need the focus fire mini stun like you have other disables on your team and the mini stun is going to be irrelevant and you'd rather just have cooldown reduction on all your abilities because they're so uh, crucial to the hero um Decent Windrunner buff, I would say. We're probably going to see her more. I don't know what heroes or what teams would play her. So I don't know Windrunner players. She's kind of the hero where like everyone kind of plays, but then she's never that strong. She hasn't been like in meta for quite a long time now. She's always there and can you know play be playing pubs and be annoying here and there, but she never feels like she's ever like in meta. You know, like, she's one of the strong heroes that people are going to ban. Right, but maybe this brings her back. Her talents seem really good, and I definitely can see the value. Again, she was kind of being played as a support for a little bit, but then uh, teams quickly forgot about that for other heroes. But anyway, down to our last hero here, Winter Wavern. The Arctic burn damage has been rescaled at nine percent at all levels to actually scaling seven point five level one to eight to eight point five. Again, Arctic Burn was such a strong level 1 ability, I feel like this nerf was warranted. And in addition to the base damage getting reduced, it's going to make Winter Wyvern uh, significantly weaker early on. Her base damage already is super low, so core Winter Wyvern might be even less viable now. And the Night Vision talent has been reduced from 600 Night Vision to 500, so nerf there as well. And I felt the hero was not overpowered but at level one definitely a big nuisance to deal with in laning stage um against certain off lane areas you're just not going to be able to lane against a wyvern she just comes and shoots the arctic burn on you it'll secure you like the first wave and you can't man up otherwise maybe another hero can come in and kill you uh, even if it's just like a 1v2 scenario winter wyvern can like sit mid for example and just put in a lot of harass um it's only like two percent change but it will make a difference for sure but that's going to be it for my patch notes analysis for 7.07c. I don't want it to go for that long. So I'll see you all in my next video. And again, make sure you leave a like if you stayed through to the end. And also subscribe if you want to see more. Because I am doing patch notes analysis for every patch now pretty much. And 
we probably gonna see a 7.07D sometime soon and I'm still waiting for those rank changes and I hope you guys are as well I'm getting a bit impatient at this point because they promised two weeks but two weeks has long passed but probably maybe see it this weekend I don't know so I'll see you all in the next video and again thank you all for watching and see you later